uh, George de Gutier from the Embassy of Netherlands in Benin. Um, he is, he is a um, uh, he's been working with community sanitation and, and hygiene. I think he wants to do a little bit of an experiment with you. So um, I'll just uh, let George uh, take over the floor here and see what happens. Yeah, hey, I'm uh, George de Goyer uh, from the Netherlands Embassy in Benin. Maybe you can just sort of talk a little bit with your neighbor now because you've been listening so long. So I would suggest that you sort of spend one minute of my time uh, with each other to say what is your most uh, impressive question that you have at the moment so that you sort of afterwards when we are all sitting here you have something already prepared in your head. So go ahead, talk to your neighbor and talk to each other and find out what is the most impressive question that you have. Go ahead. Okay, good, good morning. It is five minutes to twelve. Um, my name is uh, George de Goyer. I'm uh, working at the uh, Netherlands Embassy in Benin in West Africa, where I'm responsible for a water and sanitation program. Um, it's a bilateral program uh, that uh, covers around 15 million euros a year. Uh, and that program is, being, uh, is, is a preparation for a sectoral support. And it means that uh, we plan together and we check together, but then the whole implementation part is but done by the Benin government itself. Um, so we have our contract uh, or our convention, I should say, with the Ministry of Finance uh, as the uh, primary entry point. And from there it goes down the, or up you maybe you should say, uh, the, 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 the chain of, uh, of financial uh, public finance. Um, the, um, the thing that we do at the end is, is justification on the basis of um, um, efficiency and uh, whether the expenditure was done legally. And if it wasn't either of those, we don't pay for it. So it puts a large responsibility on the shoulders of the, uh, the implementing governmental agencies. Um, apart from that, there's also two other activities that's happening, uh, and that's also finance with Dutch money. Uh, they were programs that are organized through our ministry in The Hague. Um, one of them is uh, support to UNICEF, and the other one is a support to the Global Sanitation Fund, which is um, uh, done by the, the Collaborative Council on Water Supply and Sanitation. Um, one major thing that's happening in Benin is decentralization, which means that apart from sort of developing the sector, which is drinking water, it is sanitation and it is water resources, urban and uh, rural, um, there's also this, um, this change in, in who, who does it uh, happening. Um, what's the problem? Well, there's a few. Um, one of them is there's a very large scale open defecation. Uh, there's uh, roughly 77% on average in the country, which means that in the north you'll talk about over 90% open defecation. Um, there's a lack of hygiene uh, causing uh, uh, reinfection of already cle uh, clean water. So um, we, did a, we did a study um, in uh, recent years uh, that was together with the Germans um, where it was shown in Benin uh, that um, even if the source was clean, at the moment of consumption, still a very large percentage, up to 90%, is, is reinfected. Um, another major problem is uh, illiteracy. Um, the heads of family in particular are not able to read and write. So that really limits your, uh, your options when it comes to uh, informing people and communicating. Um, in, in the north, again, you talk about 90%, and even in the, in the, in the, the main uh, urban centers, you talk about uh, a considerable percentage of the heads of family who are not able to read or write. Um, another thing is that there is a major lack of capacity, both at central level and at the level of the municipalities, uh, to, to implement uh, programs. Um, and it also means that there's not really a, a functioning um, governmental structure uh, for changing behavior, which is what you're talking about and what, what is needed uh, if you want to uh, the, the change the effectiveness of uh, uh, your, your drinking water and sanitation interventions. 
So what was the intervention logic that, uh, that was embraced by um, the Benin government um, so far? Um, one of them is uh, a change, uh, change of behavior with, with help of, of CLTS um, to be implemented by NGOs in particular. Um, the, other the other part of the logic is, is households should create their own latrines, either financed um, uh, or by uh, using their creativity uh, for using local material. There should be latrines provided to schools and public place places. Um, uh, NGOs and, 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 and contractors are, are, are contracted uh, and uh, instructed by central and local government. And the, the results, and that's I think where also the, the, the community health clubs uh, might be interesting, uh, um, should be um, um, led further by, in particular, uh, local, uh, local government. Um, that was the intervention uh, logic. Another, another element in there, by the way, is, is data. Um, uh, that is, they're now introducing uh, a system that's called Aquo Flow. You, you might uh, be aware of that. Interesting system for uh, collecting information uh, at, at local level. Um, where we think uh, that it's in particularly interesting because uh, it allows local actors to create um, um, uh, trust, trusted information and uh, we also think uh, that uh, the ones who generate primary information should have an interest there so uh, one of the elements that uh, uh, could be introduced is um, a, um, a municipality to be eligible for, fu for funding if they have their information well organized for instance through uh, this agroflow system what were the experiences? Well, one of the experiences was that there was quite a bit of confusion about w whether CLTS uh, was working in Benin or not. There had been some um, uh, applications um, by some organizations who, uh, who did it in a sort of an improvised manner and didn't get any results. And what you then get is, is that people say, well, we've done that, it didn't work. Um, and um, that, that causes uh, a lot of problems uh, in, in, in a small country like Benin. Um, what, uh, what, what happened um, in, the, um, uh, in, in the last year is that we, we managed to, to push together all these different initiatives that I talked about. So the bilateral program, the intervention uh, with the help of UNICEF, the, uh, the upcoming intervention with the Global Sanitation Fund, and we said, put all that together and learn together. Um, and um, maybe you don't have the capacity here in the country at the moment, but at least uh, through this GSF uh, experience that has already been ongoing for a while, and through what uh, UNICEF has been, do done, has been doing over maybe about 10 years now, um, there should be in your network enough experience to, to bring that in and to share that with what is happening in, uh, in, 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 in Benin use that. So um, people went on a study tour to Madagascar. I think there's this week also a presentation of that here, of what Madagascar has been achieving. Um, uh, people from Madagascar came to Benin to, uh, to, uh, to train there. Um, we organized a, uh, a regional uh, seminar about, uh, about CLTS and its next stages, um, uh, where we got people from all around uh, Africa, in fact, uh, coming to, to Benin. Which, which also sort of uh, um, uh, had its effect on, on the professionals over there. Um, we had a visit of uh, Kamal Kar and two of, two of his facilitators, uh, who were French speaking because he's not, um, to, to show the thing there and to do some of this, um, now, I, now I lost the word again, déclencheur, uh, uh, this, this triggering. triggering, thank you, <laughs> merci. <laughs> The triggering of, of communities uh, um, uh, applying CLTS there, um, like the, the 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 thing I mentioned earlier, this 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 study showing the reinfection of water in in, in Benin, this was a very important thing. So showing that it works locally, showing it in on the spot that that something is working, was was very important. 
we all know how things have been proven elsewhere, but the, uh, the people that are uh, in, the, in their office at the ministries usually don't have the exposure that, uh, that we have been having, and they do not automatically believe uh, what, what people are saying. So when this minister was telling you, oh, do it now here, a very, very, very fantastic reaction, but it's not the usual reaction that you get if you come with, with something that is, uh, that is in fact working elsewhere. Um, sometimes they do, these ministers, meet somebody who uh, is in the same position in another country and who, who helps them to convince them. Um, another, uh, another experience is that since we said, okay, there is already this bilateral program, um, put the other programs that are there under the same steering committee. Use, use the because otherwise you get, uh, in a ministry, you get, uh, I have my project and the other person is there. Everybody has got his own project and they, they don't talk to each other because that's the way to sort of uh, single out your, your, own, uh, your own money <coughs> and therefore your own control for whatever interests. We said, don't do that, put it all together. We want, we want you to work together and to have it all together. So we really, we, 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 we pushed um, both UNICEF and um, uh, the, the, the Collaborative Council to, to do that program uh, under the same uh, platform. And then what happened was that the ministry said, oh, we, we go even further. We want all the donors that are working in uh, sanitation at, in, in the rural areas to work together and to bring all those all those activities under the same uh, umbrella. So we were very happy with that. Another um, experience is um, uh, the, um, th that's now ongoing. It just started, in fact, uh, the program of UNICEF. They gave <coughs> six months contracts to implementing NGOs um, with a, uh, a result uh, um, a criterion at the end. And if it's not achieved, there's no more continuation of their of their program. So there's a big pressure there, on the uh, on the implementing part, for these um, for these implementing NGOs. Um, I think that's that's something you can only do if you work with these this type of of, of structures. You won't um, you won't get that with um, with government agencies. And you do ne need to make a, 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 a sort of a, a going to scale change. That is, that is the, 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 the thing we, we think is, is, is essential at this moment, that you, you go from this 90% uh, open defecation to a much, uh, a much smaller percentage and that people start to change their behavior at really at scale. <coughs> um, So some conclusions. Um, we think that our observation is that local proof is essential for uh, for really making the case and and bringing change. We we saw a major change after the the report that we that I talked about on the reinfection of water after uh, after having a clean source and then at the moment consumption still finding 90% reinfected with fecal. Uh, bacteria um, that showing I mean it was known uh, we knew it but it wasn't known in Benin and it's showing it in Benin was an extremely important step in convincing uh, government uh, in taking action especially when it comes to uh, basic hygiene sanitation <coughs> the um, the pushing for uh, coordination by uh, different funders it can really lead to results uh, it is very important um, capacity development is something that is needed throughout the chain. It is not just it's not just central government. It is not just local government. It is not just uh, NGOs. It is also the financial sector, and it's also the builders. Um, financial sector, because microfinance is is one of the elements that we think is necessary if you want to uh, make it possible for people to uh, to build their own latrines. Um, <coughs> at scale. Um, another one is that uh, in, in the contract that we have with UNICEF, there was an, an, um, a um, sustainability clause, which was, um, I think, very interesting. I, I saw 
how how UNICEF in in Benin was struggling uh, with the, the the Ministry um, of Health about uh, having a sustained result for 10 years because that's what's in the contract between the Netherlands and and UNICEF. Um, so they were really struggling, and the ministry uh, uh, engaged itself to to assure that <coughs> the continuation of the of the uh, support of these communities is uh, is assured for for that period of time. So they engaged themselves. Whether it's going to work, we have to see. But you saw that that this kind of sustainability clauses does have an effect, and it goes it it, it increases the awareness at the ministry level for uh, what they're doing, and that it, there comes an end to the funding for interventions like these. And also, I think the, the output-based uh, one-time interventions, uh, as I said, being implemented by NGOs um, uh, can be a, 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 very, a very effective way of, of, of bringing change um, to be complemented with, with governmental uh, interventions. I think that's what I want to tell you now. <coughs> Thank you very much, George.